In 6.6, we're going to talk about nuclear power. You'll want to be able to describe the use of nuclear energy in power generation and the effects of nuclear energy on the environment. So what nuclear energy all comes down to is nuclear fission. So nuclear fission will throw out a, ne a neutron at an unstable atom. Um, mostly it's going to be uranium-235. And so what that'll do, because it's already unstable by being smacked by a neutron, it causes it to break into pieces. It'll break into lighter elements, and then it'll also release more neutrons. And that, um, those other neutrons are going to smack into other uranium molecules and create a chain reaction. And when it does this, when it splits into um, the smaller pieces, it releases energy. Um, and this energy we use typically in a system that looks just like the one we just talked about in the fossil fuels. That energy is released into water nearby, and then it becomes really hot, turns into steam, that steam turns the turbine, which spins the generator, fancy magic, physics stuff, and it becomes electricity. So, pretty, pretty normal. Um, we also can reuse that water as it condenses, um, we can cool it off and then kind of pump it back into that system. So this is just kind of summarize everything. Fission occurs when you have a large atom split and release heat. That heat boils water. That water turns into steam. The steam turns and spins the turbine. And the turbine is what generates electricity. Um, there, there is some research into nuclear fusion where we have the opposite process happening. We have uh, atoms combining to make larger atoms, particularly hydrogen into helium, uh, but it's not feasible for a very long time. But if we could get it, it'd be awesome. So on the one hand, nuclear power does not emit carbon dioxide or methane or, you know, really any significant pollutants. It's just, you know, water vapor that's coming out of those, those stacks. Uh, even if the building and the maintaining of power plants and mining and enriching uranium is expensive, the actual generation of electricity is cheaper than fossil fuels. Um, and it's also something that we can control the amount of electricity so we can insert control rods into uh, into the uranium reaction and cause that reaction to slow down. So it'll absorb those neutrons and make it chill out. And so it's like fossil fuels in that respect because we can control how much you know, the fossil fuel we burn and thereby control how much electricity we produce. So we can control the amount of heat being released and therefore the amount of electricity. So there are some things we're going to talk about where there are times where we produce more than we need and other times where we're not producing enough. Like for instance, solar, wind, um, and power, some forms of hydroelectric power. Um, but this is, again, we can control that based on demand. That's pretty cool. On the other hand, you do have a pretty legitimate fear of accidents. Um, again, if you look back at that statistic I showed you a couple videos ago, it's way, way less dangerous than fuels that we use very commonly. Um, but it has the it has the fear factor, and again, it's legitimate. The three accidents that you want to know about are the Three Mile Island, which is the largest in the United States, happened in Pennsylvania in 1979. Then there was Chernobyl in 1986 and Fukushima in Japan. Um, I would encourage you to research more about those. Um, but again, you just need to know like these accidents um, are pretty significant. Another big issue that comes with nuclear power is that uranium, or once the uranium is done reacting, you have to deal with the waste products, which are themselves very radioactive. Um, there have been some technologies for using the waste products. Uh, but it's just not really, again, feasible to use on a big scale or you know, they have their own issues that come along with it. And I forgot to put it on here, but I mentioned before that, again, nuclear power is not renewable. It's a cleaner fuel um, in that it, it doesn't release greenhouse gases or air pollutants, uh, but it is still not renewable. And so even if it's a good transition fuel, it's not something we can rely on permanently. Okay. So if you look at the life cycle of nuclear fuel, uh, once that, again, that uranium is done 
you know, is like a spent, is turned into all of the smaller elements that will themselves uh, produce the amount of heat that is can sustain this, the amount of power that we need. We'll first cool it off and then seal it in dry cases. Uh, these are typically in cement, lead, uh, I think this one was commonly used. And then we kind of just have to find a good place for them. Where it might be in warehouses, like heavy garden warehouses, of course, um, or bury them. It's kind of kind of where we're at right now. And they're going to remain radioactive for up to thousands, let's say, hundreds of thousands of years. So it's not a great solution, but it's just the best we got for now. All right, the end.